Okay, so proper risk and money management. It is such a priority for you as a trader, just like it is for a poker player. One of the most parallel professions out there in terms of similarities and skills and mindset and things that you're going to do, you know, th other skills or professionals out there would be poker players, either online poker players or people who play cash games at casinos. They have to have proper risk and money management. They have to understand the math. They understand, they have to understand these things and they have to adopt them in such a way that it's an absolute priority because if you don't, when you're losing, you're going to lose more with that, with poor risk money management. And when you're winning, you're going to win less. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like a bad idea to me. So draining, kind of drilling this into your head, risk, proper risk and money management, kind of like the picture is like having a good rope and a good fix uh, to the mountain. And without that, it's like not having any rope. Now, you're going to learn a lot of terms here in this slide and a few slides forward so don't feel like you have to get it all right right off the bat but we're going to introduce you to a lot of risk and money management terms here and so let's kind of go over them so the first or second line here is average plus r and risk to reward ratio you'll often hear the term risk to reward ratio and what that basically means is that what is my risk in relationship to my reward and what's that ratio so if i'm risking you know, $10,000 on a trade, how much do I stand to gain if it hits my profit target? And so if I'm looking to gain $20,000, if it hits my profit target, I'll gain 20,000. And if I lose, I risk 10. Then what that means is my risk to reward ratio is one to two. And we'll kind of go over that. But this is, the main thing you need to understand is this is, it's a way of understanding how much you're risking in, in terms of how much you are going to gain if you win. I personally find average plus R to be a better metric and a way to measure it than risk to reward ratio, and here's why. When you see, um, in the next slide we'll kind of go over it, but the risk to reward ratio has two numbers, and average plus R is just one number. Average plus R is basically just saying, how much are you on all your wins and losses, particularly on your wins, that when you win, how much are you winning on average? Are you winning one times your risk? Are you winning two times your risk? Because it's one number instead of two numbers, and your risk is always going to be um, a multiple of one, basically, unless you cut the position in half, but even then, your average plus R is gonna be a variable of that, which I'll go over in a second. So I personally prefer to use average plus R versus risk reward ratio, and I'll show you in the next slide um, what this kind of really translates out to you. It'll make a little more sense then. But just remember, average plus R, and in my opinion, is a better metric than risk to reward ratio. Risk of ruin, this concept actually came about for professional um, poker and casino and blackjack players. Basically, they wanted to know that if they could win X percent of the time and they were working with a specific size bankroll and the percentage uh, edge that they had was whatever percent that they could calculate out into infinity whether they were going to what is quote unquote ruin or blow up their account. And if you have a risk of ruin at zero, what that means is you have a 0% chance to blow up your account assuming your metrics are stable. And that's a super important statistic because this statistic alone will tell you whether you're going to make money or not or whether your account as it is is going to blow up based on your current parameters and so your goal should be to build your account up and your performance up so that your risk of ruin is zero if you have that then you know you have a zero percent chance of losing money and that means by default that you're going to make money over time another uh, kind of term or important concept when it comes to risk from money management is max risk parameters you should always have a kind of set of parameters that is your guideline for in terms of how much you can lose per trade per day per week per month you don't need to have all of those you could just be fine with max risk per trade and max risk per month but you need parameters and the, the reason why you have the parameters is it's kind of like um, a guardrail if you lose a certain amount in a month then it's probably a good chance that you're just kind of off that month and you're going to have some off months just like the best basketball and football players have off games and off weeks it's going to happen to you you should bet on that being a reality and so we have these kind of guardrails and these max risk parameters to avoid 
going too far out of alignment. At a minimum, you're going to need a max risk per trade because that's, and we'll kind of get into this in detail, if you don't have the maximum risk kind of per trade laid out ahead of time, then maybe one trade you're risking $500 and the next trade you're risking 1000 And if that number is constantly in flux in terms of how it relates to your count, then you have a mathematical problem, which means that you will never really know if you're gonna win or lose your next trade. You just won't know. There's no way you can know that. And so with that being said, if you don't know if you're gonna win or lose your next trade, well, then wouldn't you wanna be risking the same percent of your account each time? Because what if I risk more on the next trade and I lose that one, but then the trade after that I risk less and I win that one? Well, when I risk more on one trade and lose, that's a bigger drawdown for me. And then the next trade, if I risk less, that means the amount that I gained on that was less because there was less upside for me to make. I was working with a smaller amount. So it's super important that you build what I call a risk profile uh, and kind of portfolio in terms of how you manage risk. And this is kind of like your guide. It's kind of like your playbook for how you manage risk so that you don't have to think about these things. It's just kind of drilled into you and you know exactly what you're doing. When it comes to risk per trade, I recommend in the beginning no more than 1%. And if I had to kind of give a little tip or suggestion, it's better if you start off conservative because you're gonna make a lot more mistakes in the beginning. So why would you put more of your capital at trade or at risk if you're more likely to make mistakes? Once we kind of get those mistakes kind of narrowed down and eliminated or reduced, then we can start putting more money on the table, so to say. But until that, I'd recommend less, risking less than 1%. You know, you can start off with 0.25 or 0.5%, but ideally no more than 1% risk per trade. Now there's a big debate in, in it, not amongst professionals, but there's a big debate amongst like trading mentors, because, mostly because a particular narrative by somebody who's really good at marketing um, has kind of proliferated that you wanna be risking a fixed dollar amount. And I'm gonna show you with many scenarios that that's not the path you want to take. You want to be have a fixed percent of equity at risk uh, at any point in time. It's a far better model than fixed dollar amount. And let's kind of get into that. So we'll get into that actually in the next slide, but I want to actually cover a couple things in here so you understand this whole risk reward and average plus R. If you're going to risk $50 on the next trade, then that's one R, that's one, that's uh, basically your risk for the trade. And if you are going to go for four times that, let's say you're going for a target that's four times that. So you have a chance to make $200, you're gonna risk 50. According to the risk reward ratio, we call that one to four. You're risking one to gain four. One dollar to gain four, 50 to gain 200. I think it's much simpler to just say, hey, I'm going for four R. It's one number. It already has built into it implicitly that if I'm going for four R, it's four times one. I'm always risking one R. And so with that being said, or a multiple of one R, so I think average plus R is a far better way to express risk than the risk to reward ratio. Another example of average plus R and risk to reward ratio is let's say on the, let's say I have a larger account or a slightly larger account and I risk $500 on trade. Okay, that's my one risk. That's, that's what I'm risking for this account. So I'm risking one R, which is 500. And let's say I'm going for two times that. My target is twice that. Okay, so I'm trying to make $1,000 and I'm risking 500. If you were to express that as risk to reward ratio, that'd be one to two. Or you could just simply say 2R. Hey, I'm targeting 2R in this trade. My risk is 500. Let's say you have an even slightly large account. Let's say you're starting to get into the more professional retail trader space. Then, you know, you're going to start risking larger amounts. Just like poker players, as they get better, they risk larger amounts. So when you start getting into the professional retail trader space, you're going to have trades where you're risking four figures and five figures and up. And so you could be risking $5,000 on that trade. That's your one risk. And let's say you're trying to target three times that. Well, you're going for 15,000, which is three times 5,000. That's a plus three R. If you use risk to reward ratio, that's one to three. And again, this is just a much simpler expression of that. Okay, so risk of ruin table. So this is a table that I would suggest taking a screenshot of because it has a lot of information in it. 
the best way to understand this, so there's a couple of variables in here, but remember what I talked about in terms of risk of ruin, which is that what are the percent chance that you are going to blow up your... So let's break this table down. Right here is your win ratio, or another way to express this is accuracy. So we have varying levels of accuracy based in 5% increments. This would be, hey, I'm 10% accurate, so I'm winning 10 out of every 100 trades, 15%, 20%, all the way down to 90%. Payoff ratio simply refers to how much you are gaining on average per trade when you win. So if it's one to one, then that means if I'm risking $1,000, on average, I'm gaining $1,000 per trade. Two to one would be if I'm risking $1,000, on average, I'm making $2,000 per trade. Three to one is I'm making, for every $1,000 I'm risking, I'm making $3,000 and so forth, 4,000 and 5,000. Now. Inside these little boxes here is the percent chance that you're going to blow up your account. So if you're 10% accurate, and that means out of 100 trades, you're gonna win 10 and lose 90. If you're re risking 1,000 to gain 1,000 or payoff ratio to one to one, well, you have 100% chance of blowing up your account. And if you look, 10%, 15%, 20%, 25%, 30%, 35%, 40%, 45%, 50. All the way up to 50%. If you are anywhere between 10 and 50% accurate and you're risking one and you're gaining one every time, so you're risking 1,000 to gain 1,000, risking 100 to gain 100, you have a 100% chance that you will blow up your account. It's only until you get to 55% accurate does that uh, number go away from 100. It comes down to 13.4%. At 60%, you have a 1.73% chance to blow up your account. At 65%, you have a 0.2% chance to blow up your account. Only at 70% and above will you have a 0% chance to blow up your account. And if you're wondering why that is, this has to do with two things. One, transaction costs. The way trading works, and I've talked about this with variance, is that yes, if I am 50% accurate, then what that generally means is I will, for every 100 trades, I should on average win 50 and lose 50. Very much like flipping a coin. If I flip a coin, over a hundred a thousand times the average number of times that i will hit heads or tails should be about 50 percent but if you were to run an experiment and say you were to flip a coin a hundred times and then count all the heads and tails it's not going to always be perfect there's going to be some times where you flip it a hundred times and heads will show up a little bit more in tails because it will vary the statistics will average out over time but there's going to be variance Sometimes you, you know, over a hundred flips, you're going to get more heads and tails, sometimes more tails and heads. It's not a perfect ratio. And so because of that variance, you can have times where maybe you go on a little bit of a losing streak and it's enough over that hundred trades that you still have a possibility of blowing up your account. So this is really accounting for variance. In fact, all these little, all these little areas of these white boxes are really have to do with variance and transaction costs. So it's important to kind of understand that. So only once you are at 70% accurate do you have mathematically a 100% chance that you will make money with a payoff ratio one to one. At two to one, you have a little bit more, you have a little bit bigger window to do that. 65% accuracy, you're going to make money 100% guaranteed. But even look over here, look at this kind of 0.04%, 0.18%, 0.83%. That's a very, very low probability that you're gonna blow up your account. Even 3.41 is a pretty low probability. Ideally, you want the number at zero because then you know 100% mathematically you're going to make money. But you have a lot more of a buffer window when you start going to higher payoff ratios or higher targets on average. And you also have a smaller window to lose money. When we go to three to one, the window gets even smaller, same for four to one, same for five for one. And if you notice that as you increase the average size of your target, the window also gets bigger to make money. And your buffer zone for making money in terms of 100% or pretty darn close to 100% gets bigger as you keep going further and further in terms of the payoff ratio. So this is a super important table to have with you and to understand. And I recommend that once you have a solid baseline of 100 trades that you analyze your risk of ruin so that you can understand, hey, is the way I'm trading right now mathematically going to make money or lose money? It's very important that you know that 
because once you have that then you can really see where is that Rubicon where is that line in the sand that you need to get to to where once you cross that point you're gonna make money you don't even have to worry about it at that point that's just part of the deal that's how the mathematics play out so this is a super important table to really kind of learn and digest and make sure that you okay risk threshold examples this is just kind of give you an idea we talked about max risk per trade per day per week per month so let's say your max risk per trade is 0.25 percent of your account so if i have a hundred thousand dollar account one percent would be one thousand dollars so 0.25 percent would be 250 dollars so i'm going to risk 250 dollars per trade that's one r and so this is just kind of an example. So let's say this is your risk profile, 0.25% per trade. Well, you could set a max risk per day of 4R. It could be 5R, whatever. If it's 4R, then it's four times this. So the max you're gonna risk is $1,000 per day. And so this is just kind of an example of how you can do that. Using these same numbers, 2R, or sorry, two times that, or 8R, that means you'd have to lose eight trades in a row without winning a single trade then you'd be risking a max 2%. And then a max risk of 4%, if you're risking 0.25%, that means you have to lose 16 trades in a row to hit your max risk per month. So this is just kind of an example profile. Again, I'd recommend no more than 1% per trade. And if you had to ask me about what I would kind of give as a guideline for max risk per month, I would say no more than nine or nine and a half percent. And the reason, I'll, I'll just give you a quick summary of that. The reason being is, is because statistics are pretty clear. Every time you have a double digit month drawdown, so 10% or higher, the statistical probabilities that you're gonna recover your account go down exponentially. And so you wanna avoid that as much as possible. Okay, so we talked about percent equity risk model versus fixed dollar amount. And I kind of wanted to show you a couple scenarios of which one does better. So let's say you started off with a $10,000 account and let's just say you had a 100 trade winning streak. You won 100 trades in a row, which I've seen done before. I, I'm trying to think of what my largest winning streak was, probably somewhere maybe 20, 25 trades in a row. I don't think I made it quite to 30, but 20, 25 trades in a row. And so, but let's say you won 100 trades in a row and you were risking 1% of your equity per trade versus a fixed $100 per trade. At the end of 100 trades, if you start off with 10,000, if you used a percent equity risk model, at the end, your account would be $27,048. However, if you went the fixed dollar amount, your account would be $20,000. So in this scenario, it completely outperforms by a large margin the fixed dollar amount. Let's take the other side of the equation. Let's say you go on a 100 trade losing streak, which I think would be pretty uncommon. Um, is it out of, is it, could it happen? Yes, but it'd be very unlikely. But let's just say you just had an absolutely awful run. 100 trades, you lost 100 in a row. Same size account, same number of trades, percent, you're risking 1% of your equity versus $100 per trade. At the end of those 100 trades, with the percent uh, fixed percent uh, equity model, you would still have $3,660 left in your account. Guess what? If you're risking a fixed dollar amount per trade, your account would be blown up. You would have nothing left. So in this scenario, again, fixed percent outperforms fixed dollar amount. And this was kind of a nice little study that somebody did that, and, and it's true, traders tend to go on streaks. So let's say you happen to go on a nine trade win streak or a nine, 10, or 11, 12 trade losing streak. This green line is what your account looks like if you're risking a fixed percent of your account per trade. This one wow performs tremendously. The fixed dollar amount will only gain about six, 7%, but the fixed percent will be up about 17, 18, 9%. And that's just over nine trades. Whereas, and that's risking, I, I believe they uh, had it at like uh, 1% per trade for the fixed uh, percent amount. And same on the losing streaks. And so the fixed percent model slows down your losses as you go on a losing streak, whereas the fixed dollar amount continues to drop your account even more. So, you know, we've run a lot of simulations when it comes to fixed percent versus fixed dollar amount. And in seven, maybe eight out of 10 scenarios, 
fixed percent does better than fixed dollar amount. And so I can't recommend it enough that this is the model you should adopt. And it also makes it much cleaner for you to manage. Like if I know I'm risking 1% of my equity per trade, as my account grows or shrinks or as it's in flux over time, I can easily do that calculation of, hey, what's 1% of my account? If I go on a winning streak, I still know what 1% is in my account. I know what my equity, my, my equity is in my account. But if you go on a winning streak and you're risking a fixed dollar amount, well, don't you have to decide arbitrarily when you want to increase that fixed dollar amount? And even if you do decide to do that, what mathematics are you basing it on? And how do you know at what intervals to change that? Have you done the math on that? So if you want a more simple, straightforward model that performs better, Thank you.